Okay, so uh, this little project we're going to call the Tin Ringer. Um, now, rather than just show you something that's working, we're actually going to make it from scratch because I don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, if it doesn't work, of course, you won't see this video. <coughs> so, um, first thing we're going to need for this project is, of course, a tin. Make sure it is tin and not aluminium. Easy done, you get a magnet and make sure it sticks to it. So uh, we know that's tin. So uh, also going to need an NPN transistor. I'm using the TIP 35C for this. Um, an LED, 100 ohm resistor. May need a 9 volt, but we're going to try it first with a 1.5. So um, <coughs> for this one we're basically going to do use the dual piece circuit and um, see if this tin works as our core. And then if we can actually get that to work, we're going to go a little further with this project. I'll just grab the bit that I'm looking for here. And we're going to add this to it. Just going to sit on the top. Alright, so um, first thing we're going to do is, uh, of course you're going to need some wire as well. We're going to drill a hole in the bottom here, so as we can screw our transistor to the tin. So the whole tin is going to become our um, collector of our transistor. Um, a little bit of sandpaper to clean the tin up where we need to solder wires and that to it. Um, and that's about it for the project. So first thing I'm going to do is mount the transistor. Um, solder. I'm going to solder the collector to the tin as well just to make sure we get a good connection. Um, I will then go ahead and wind the first of our two coils on there and I'm going to use a heavy gauge wire for that. Uh, this wire here is uh, 0.55mm. So I'm going to go ahead and do that um, and we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so our transistor and first coil is wound on. You'll notice I've also soldered an LED onto the tin. The positive side of the LED, the one with the longest leg, um, has to be soldered to the tin and you leave the negative side hanging out, like so. Now we're going to work from the bottom of the tin, um, use that as our face so as we can sort out clockwise and anti-clockwise. So you'll see in this direction here, this coil has been well wound on anti-clockwise. So wind the first one on anti-clockwise. Our second coil, which is going to go on top of that, or above that, is going to be wound on clockwise. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that now. And uh, we'll come right back to it. Alright, so um, our second winding is on now. I forgot to mention the first winding I put 30 turns on, and the second winding I put 60 turns on. Um, of course, the start of our first one gets soldered to the tin, which is the collector of our transistor. Um, and that is wound, looking at the bottom tin, in the anti-clockwise direction. Now, the second coil you can wind in either direction. If you wind that one in anti-clockwise direction as well, then the start of that coil gets um, joined to the end of your first coil. Um, if you're going clockwise, like I have done, then the end of your first coil gets soldered and joined to the end of your second coil. Um, and that, of course, goes to the positive side of your battery. <coughs> so um, what we're going to do now is, because I've wound one anti-clockwise and one clockwise, I'm going to join the two ends of the coils together solder them, put a bit of a lead out for our battery. Um, I'm going to solder the 100 ohm resistor to the base of the transistor. Now remember your transistor is now upside down so this pin over here is the base and this one is the emitter as it would be when you turn it up the right way. So um, and then of course the uh, start of our second winding in this case being wound opposite to the first one will go to the 100 ohm resistor on the base. 
um, and then of course our emitter goes to the negative side of our LED and to the negative side of our battery and hopefully it should work so uh, we'll go ahead and get all that done and um, see what happens when we hook it up to a battery so we're just using the dual ringer circuit if anyone just got lost in that lot of crap um, 30 turns for the primary, 60 turns for the secondary, same size wire I really don't think it matters what size wire you use, just don't go too small um, like I say I'm using uh, 0.55 for both windings so reasonably thick but you could use 0.41 um, and it would be quite fine I believe but uh, we'll go ahead and get the rest of the circuit up and stuck together hook a battery up to it and we'll see if the light actually works so we'll be back okay so just to clarify I'm not sure whether I said dual ringer or dual faith circuit <coughs> dual faith circuit not dual ringer um, now I just use super glue to stick all my wires um, when I finish the end of the uh, runs and the start of the runs uh, this case on the start of the bottom one I didn't have to because of course it's soldered to the tin so that's our dual phase circuit, it's all, all sorted out, hooked up, ready to go. All we've got to do is place a battery in there and hopefully the little light's going to come on. So here's our moment of truth. And there you go. Now it's very bright, we could probably, actually it's very bright, we could probably actually go down or up on our base resistance because um, this is actually coupling a little better than I thought it would so um, that LED is probably going to blow out shortly so um, I might just uh, drop that resistance down if I had a spare pot floating around I would put that in there 1k pot in there and do the job just nice I reckon but um, I don't believe I'll have one that's not toasted I'll have to have a look but uh, I'll go back and we'll do something with this uh, base resistance chuck the scope across it and uh, we'll have a look okay so rather than drop the base resistance down I just added uh, three more LEDs to the top there and uh, they cruise along quite nicely chuck the lid back on the tin um, you could probably extend the wires, chuck the battery in the tin there as well um, drill a little hole, feed the wires through and then, uh, Solder your leads to your connections with the battery already in there. Close the lid, said and done. Um, maybe a switch and a solar panel on the lid to charge the battery up and during the day and uh, switch it on during the night. That's um, not a bad bit of light. So uh, we're actually going to chuck our scope on there now and have a look, see. Get one of these leads out, which I have three on there at the moment, all twisted together, of course. Uh, sorry about the wild camera work there, but we're just trying to get everything out of the way here, and it's just not happening. That one can come out. I'm using that for the trigger. Right, so um, I'll turn channel 2 off. And we'll set our trigger to channel 1. And uh, we'll hook the ground up to our emitter. And probe to the collector. Wind this down a bit. Voltage up, and there you go. And I'll do a little waveform 3.9 kilohertz, fairly low in the frequency. But um, what I want to do is see if we've got any sort of magnetic field up here that we can use for our tower. So um, I'll go and find a coil. I've do have a couple laying around here somewhere 
just so as we can have a look, see what's going on the top. Of course that one's all soldered on. Be back shortly. Well, as it turns out, we have bugger all up the top. Which is the blue trace across that uh, coil, which has many turns, and there should be a whole lot of voltage there, but uh, there is nothing. It actually turns out that the magnetic field is actually stronger on the bottom of the tin. So it's with our little coil under the bottom of the tin, then we have more, but um, still not enough to do the job. So, um, don't think we're going to have a win there. Anyway, um, it certainly works. It's driving those little LEDs quite nicely. I know how much current is it drawing. I don't know yet, but uh, we'll go and find out, shall we? Let's stick our amp meter in there. Back shortly. Alrighty, our amp meter is hooked up, and it's fairly hungry. And you know why that is. Uh, dropping down rapidly is because the uh, battery is going flat. Oh no, we're going back up again now. Yeah. 151 milliamps. So, um, fairly hungry. We could definitely do um, with a lower base resistance, but uh, you guys can chuck a pot in there, experiment a bit, but um, hey, it works. No problem at all there. That's what I'm going to do now is take the lid off and um, we're going to get it up and running again and I'm going to fill the pot up with water and see what happens. Back shortly. Here's one thing I noticed. Um, my milliamp scale, the resistor across the uh, milliamp one is only one ohm and it has changed things dramatically. Went out to 16.9 kilohertz. Um, just by adding that one ohm between the battery and the uh, power in, if I sit that clip lead on there and bypass our amp meter, you can see the LEDs go brighter and our frequency drops right down to 5.9. Let's try and get that on there steady. 5.3 if I disconnect it 18.9 kilohertz and that is just one ohm in front of the battery or in series with the battery and our power in and we've more than doubled the frequency anyway we're now going to take our water here and we're going to tip it in the can who wants to have a guess of what's going to happen? Because I don't know if anything will happen at all or uh, something will happen. So um, here we go. We are 143 odd milliamps, 21.32 kilohertz pouring in now. We are now full of water. Still 143-144 milliamps and frequency is about the same. So uh, filling it up with water did nothing really. Oh we found the leak where the screw went through. I <laughs> forgot all about that. Right guys I gotta go get rid of this mess before we have a disaster here. Cheers and uh, thanks for watching.